I would uh, suggest that it was precisely because of slavery that Donald Trump was elected. I suppose you know that uh, he, uh, despite his attempt to uh, shift facts so that they represent his desire, uh, he did not win uh, the majority uh, of the votes that were cast in the last election. It was only because of an obsolete institution anchored in slavery designed to guarantee that states with large black, that is to say large slave populations and small white populations uh, would be able to achieve uh, uh, leverage at the federal level, uh, and I'm referring to the Electoral College, it was only because of that institution that uh, Trump was elected. Uh, so slavery elected Donald Trump. But, um, but I, I should say that uh, uh, most of us uh, are as uh, um, puzzled as you are uh, that, uh, that a, a democratic system could result in replacing of someone uh, like uh, Donald Trump uh, in the highest executive office in, 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 in the US. So. But I absolutely agree with you that it's the two-party system that um, needs to become obsolete. Uh, uh, vast numbers of people didn't vote uh, because they didn't think that there was a, um, there was a real choice. Uh, and I, you know, also think you're right then that, um, that Hillary Clinton helped to lose that election. Uh, uh, and particularly her kind of feminism. Her glass ceiling feminism that, uh, that appealed only to um, bourgeois women, women who were already at the top high enough so that they could almost reached the ceiling, all they needed to do was um, puncture the ceiling and not considering the vast majority of, of, of women uh, and men and people of other genders uh, uh, who are at the bottom of the, the, the hierarchy. Uh, there's been a great deal of conversation over the last period about the need for a, um, a third party, a, a, an independent party that is not linked uh, to the capitalist corporations in the way both Republican and Democratic parties are, are linked. Uh, you know, in many ways, the Democratic Party is in worse shape than the Republican Party. Uh, now, first of all, uh, almost all of the major figures are old. I mean, you know, and I know we're old. Uh, but, but, uh, but, but, but the Democratic Party has lost its ability to um, in, in, in inspire people. So that um, uh, I, um, I do think that uh, this should be a period in which we are at least beginning to build the foundation for a party that embraces what is left of the radical labor movement, uh, the, the anti-racist movement, uh, uh, the, the, the feminist movement, the anti-war movement, uh, the movement against the environment. Uh, um, but of course the challenge is how does one build a structure for uh, such a party? There has been discussion about such a party since, as a matter of fact, 1968. In the 1968 elections, uh, uh, which uh, uh, resulted in the election of Richard Nixon, uh, there were discussions about uh, the obsolescence of the two-party system. And I can remember, as a matter of fact, that Charlene Mitchell, 
who was a, who is a black woman who was a member of the Communist Party, became the first black woman to run for president uh, uh, in the 1968 elections. And that was precisely the point that, that she was making uh, in her campaign. Uh, so in a sense, that promise of 1968 still uh, remains to be um, fulfilled. I want to say before I conclude, uh, I, I just want to acknowledge what's happening here in France and the struggles of the students. Uh, uh, and uh, I don't think that um, it has been pointed out that we held our morning session of the Global 68 uh, Conference in a liberated space uh, in um, École des hautes études, sciences sociales, um, uh, because the students had um, attempted to occupy the space where the meetings were scheduled to be held. Uh, that space was locked down. We couldn't get in it. And so we, uh, in solidarity with the student struggles, we met in the space they had uh, uh, liberated uh, and I, 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 um, I'm hoping that, that the kinds of solidarities that we've been talking about uh, uh, will first of all be, be expressed in relationship to the student and worker movement here in France in 2018. Uh, and that we can broaden the sense of, uh, of the um, interconnectedness of these struggles and for example, the Palestinian struggle. Uh, and I, I'm hoping that the students uh, are also uh, calling uh, for people to get involved in the BDS movement. Uh, uh, and I thank you so much for the answer to that question. Uh, and at the same time, I think we have to bring it down to a practical level of how we encourage people through our organizing efforts to incorporate Palestine on every single agenda of struggle for social justice. <laughs>